All right, so in section 2.7, what we're going to be looking at is derivatives and rates of change. So what this is going to do is it's going to take everything we learned about limits, and we're finally going to be able to apply it to this really solid scientific idea. Okay? So if we want to know the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a point x equals a, then what we've done in the past is that we've investigated that slope formula, which is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, where b and a are very, 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 very close numbers. Okay? So what this is going to be is this is going to be something called the derivative. So an instantaneous rate of change, also known as the derivative, also known as the slope of the tangent line, is the rate at which something is changing in that moment. So you can think of it as the speedometer or the exact velocity of a function. So one of the ways that we can think about this, and there's two different ways that your book illustrates this idea, <clears throat> is one is that we can pick some arbitrary point x, okay, which would have a y value of f of x. Now, remember, when we're trying to find the instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of the tangent line, whoops, okay, we can only approximate that if this x value is getting really, really close to this a value. So what we want is that we want our function f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, so that's going to approximate the slope of the tangent line, but we want x to get as close to a as we possibly can. Now we can't just plug x in for a because then we would have 0 over 0, but what we can do is that we can find the limit as x approaches a. Okay, so this is one definition of the derivative, which by the way sometimes we call f prime of a. So this is the derivative at a. This is also known as the slope of the tangent line. And one last thing, if f is a position function, then f prime would be its velocity. Okay. Now, we're going to learn about this a little bit later, but if you take the derivative of something, and then you take the derivative of the derivative, okay. So if velocity tells you how fast something's going, what happens if you find out how fast, how fast something's going? Well, the rate at which a speed changes is called the acceleration. By the way, sometimes these are called v of x or v of t and a of x. All right, another way to think about the derivative. So these are going to mean the same thing. Okay, they're just slightly different ways of thinking about it. <clears throat> is let's say that you have a point that is a distance, let's say, h away from a. Okay? So h away. So if a was 5, let's say that we're looking at a distance that's 2 away. So if that was true, then what would this new one be? Well, if a was 5, and h is 2, this new point would be 5 plus 2 more, so that would be 7. So we're going to call this point a plus h. Okay? And just like before, this will have a point, and its y-coordinate will be f of a plus h. Now, remember, what we want to do is that we want to get these points to get as close together as possible so that we can find the slope of the tangent line. So, in order to get these points as close together as possible, what we want is that we want this distance, h, to get really close to zero. So, what we're going to be doing is looking at the limit as the distance between those two approaches zero, and we're still going to be using that slope of the secant line to find the slope of the tangent line. So, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by a plus h minus a. Now what you'll see is that this kind of simplifies on the bottom, those a's cancel out. So typically how we'll write that is just like this. And remember, h is the distance between these two points, so we always want it going to zero. This is also 
the derivative at a. All right, let's look at some examples. <clears throat> so down here we have the definition. So the derivative, aka the instantaneous rate, rate of change, aka the slope of the tangent line, is, you can define it either way. You can either do f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. And remember, that's as x approaches a. Or you can divide it, or you can define it, I'm sorry, as f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h as h goes to zero. Remember, as that distance between them goes to zero. One more thing is that the slope of the tangent line, which equals m, is also referred to as delta y over delta x. So slope is the change in y over the change in x, and then a lot of times in science, physics, things like that, delta is referring to a change of something. Okay? Another way that you might see this is you might see it written as dy over dx, because delta is the Greek letter for d. All right, so let's take the, this definition and apply it. So let's say that given the position of a ball where f is height in feet and x is seconds, f of x equals x squared. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to find f prime of 2 and write an interpretation. So if we want to find f prime of 2, what this means is that our function equals x squared and our a value equals 2. So you can use either definition up here. Let's go ahead and do both. So first, I'm going to start with the limit as x approaches 2, okay, because my a equals 2, so I'm going to replace this a with 2, and that's going to be x squared, which is my f of x, minus f of a, that's if I actually took a and plugged it in my function, so that would be 2 squared, divided by x minus a, which is 2. Now, what this becomes is this becomes the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2. Now what you're going to find every single time you go to find the derivative is that you're always going to get an indeterminate form, aka 0 over 0. So remember, if we get 0 over 0, what that means is that we just need to do a little bit more work. So because we have a polynomial on the top, I'm going to go ahead and factor it. So that would be x minus 2 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 2. And we're still looking as x approaches 2. So what happens is that these x minus 2s are going to cancel out. So I'm left with the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 2, which is going to give me 4 which is f prime of 2. So that would be my derivative or my rate of change at 2. All right, let's go ahead and try figuring this, figuring, figuring this out using the other definition. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this work. Hopefully you have it written down on your own paper. All right, now using the other definition, we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all divided by h. So what this f of 2 plus h means is that I'm going to take 2 plus h and I'm going to plug it in for my x and my function. So what this is going to become is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h squared minus f of 2 is 4, divided by h. Now again, if I just try to plug 0 in, I'm going to get 0 over 0, so I need to go a little bit further on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and expand it. So if I take 2 plus h and I square it, I'm going to get 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 4, all divided by h. Now, this 4 and that negative 4 will cancel. This h will cancel out with this h and one of these h's. So what this will leave me is this will leave me with the limit as h approaches 0 of 4 plus h, which if I plug 0 in for h is going to give me 4, which is f prime of 2. So notice that no matter which definition you use, the one with the a or the one with the h, you're going to get the same answer. 
All right, personally, the one that I prefer to use most often is this one. Okay, I also call them Adam and Henry. I like to use Henry more often. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this so that I can write an interpretation. All right, so what I found is I found that f prime of two equals four. Now, how do I write an interpretation? Well, remember that this is the f prime of a, which is the slope of the tangent line, which is also the change in y over the change in x. So what this means is I'm gonna have a change of four. Well, what's the, um, What's the unit of measurement for my y coordinate? It's feet. And that's going to change as y as x changes, and x is seconds. So what that tells me is that as my ball is moving at exactly two seconds after I throw it, it's going to have a velocity of four feet per second. So two seconds after being thrown. My ball has velocity of four feet per second. Great. Now, the second part of the question is that we want to find the equation of the tangent line. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture real quick. So my function is x squared, which means it's going to have a parabola. And I'm looking at the point when a equals 2. Likewise, my y-coordinate will be 4, and I want to find the equation of this tangent line. Now remember, f prime of 2 equaled 4, which is going to be the slope of my tangent line. That's how it's defined up above. So I'm going to have y equals 4, which is my m, x plus b. So I'm going to plug in 2 for my x, 4 for my y. And what I'm going to get is 4 equals 8 plus b, which means b has to equal negative 4. So the equation for my line would be y equals 4x minus 4 at that point. Now, another way that you might see them write the um, equation for a tangent line, this is the y, the slope intercept form, okay, because you have the m and the b. Another way you might see it is in point slope form. And in point slope form, what you do is that instead of having a y-intercept, you include a coordinate. So you include 2 and 4. So if you're going to do it in um, <clears throat> point slope form, it would be y minus 4 equals 4 times x minus 2. Okay, I just wanted you guys to know that because you might see both on your homework. All right, now what we want to do is we want to use both definitions of the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line to f of x equals 3x minus x squared at the point 1 comma 2. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so if I want to find the derivative and find the slope of the tangent line to this function at that point, what that means is that my point tells me that my a value is going to be 1, because that's the x value I'm looking at. So first, let's go ahead and use the atom definition. So we're going to have x approaching 1 of our function f of x, which is 3x minus x squared minus f of 1, so if I actually plug 1 into this function, I'm going to have 3 minus 1, which will give me 2, divided by x minus 1. So that'll be the limit as x approaches 1 of negative x squared plus 3x minus 2, divided by x minus 1. which if I factor that top part, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 
negative x minus 1 times x plus 2 divided by x minus 1. Sorry, that should be a minus. My bad. Okay, now when I cancel these out, and I actually plug 1 in for my x value, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get negative 1 minus 2, which that's going to give me minus 1, and then a negative minus 1 will give me just 1. All right, now let's do this using the other definition. So we are going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times 1 plus h minus 1 plus h squared minus, again if I take f of 1 that means I'm plugging 1 into my function so I'm just going to get 2 divided by h. Now in this top part what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it out and then see if anything nice is going to cancel. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 plus 3h minus 1 minus 2h minus h squared minus 2 all over h. All right, now negative 1 and negative 2 would make negative 3, so I'll cancel out with that there. All right. So then I will have the limit as h approaches 0, 3h minus 2h will just give me h, minus h squared over h. This h will cancel out with one of these h's and that h. So what I'll be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 minus h, which again will give me 1 for my f prime. Great, now that you guys have that all written down, I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I have a little bit more room. So what we found is that f prime of 1 equals 1 at the point 1 comma 2. So other than that, we want to use the definition to find the equation of the tangent, or find the slope of the tangent line at the point 1 comma 2. Let's go ahead and also find the equation of that tangent line. Okay? So. I'm going to have y minus 2 equals 1 times x minus 1. So that is going to be the point slope form. Now, if you want to get from point slope form into um, slope intercept form, all you have to do is solve for y. So I have y minus 2 equals, go ahead and distribute that 1, which is going to be x minus 1. Add 2 to both sides, so we're going to have x plus 1. So this form would be the slope intercept form. Either one you guys want to use is fine, just keep in mind what they want for the uh, homework. Alright, next one is if the function c of x is the function where the input x is units sold and c is the cost to produce x units, find a verbal interpretation of c prime of 4 equals 300. So remember, x is the unit sold. So c prime of 4 means that we have sold 4 units. So when we have sold four units. Now what we want to do is how do we interpret that 300? So first off, remember that the derivative c prime of x is going to be the change in cost over the change in units sold. So what this means is that it will cost So how much will it cost? It will cost 300, and let's say this is in dollars. Per 
unit sold. Okay, perfect.